Mm-hmm. Here we go again. To my Israelite brothers mm-hmm. and sisters, those that are near and those that are far off. All praise, honor, and glory to the Most High mm-hmm. Heavenly Father and His Most Glorious Son, Yeshua mm-hmm. HaMashiach, on this day. Those who the world still know and call by the name of Jesus the Christ. Mm-hmm. We like to say shalom on this day. Mm-hmm. So here we go. And it don't ever mm-hmm. seem to be a shortage of fighting and mm-hmm. arguments when it come down to these so-called mm-hmm. holidays. So we got some of the brothers mm-hmm. that want to combat with the post that I made. Mm-hmm. And first thing I'm going to say is that all of the mm-hmm. brothers that came to comment on the post, Mm-hmm. You exactly who we was trying to reach because the post was specifically addressed to our hypocrite brothers. And so, you know what? When I look at what people do, if they call a specific type of people out, if it don't fit me, then I ain't going in there. And I just specifically say it to our hypocritical brothers. Now, now, let's say what I'm not saying before I say what I am saying. So, I'm going to have Yasin to tag a few people. While I uh, take care of something right quick, can you just tag some people? Tag some people on there. Is it Mike? Yep, yep, yep. Just keep tagging. Can't talk right now, y'all. I can't talk right now. Oh yeah. I'll get sweet for some coffee. Yeah. Hold that right there. Keep that right there. That should be enough, people. All right. So I invited our brothers. I said, well, okay, well, let's 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 get let, first thing I want to do is I want to say what I'm not saying before I say what I am saying. Nasi, Nasi, I seen you on the post too. So let me say what I'm not saying before I say what I am saying. Most of you guys are younger than me, okay? That means that a lot of you brothers, before you ever even came and learned anything about the scripture, I was already there. So what I'm gonna say that I'm not saying is I'm not gonna say that you're not right. You're absolutely right with what you're saying about the 4th of July being Independence Day and being something that comes from the culture of the heathens. You're absolutely right. And I'll be the first one to identify with that. Now, so, if I tell you that I agree on that, then quite naturally, you should see that it's something else. It's another point that I'm trying to relate. Okay, because if I'm telling you that I agree with the fact that the, that people shouldn't be celebrating as they come to truth, then you don't have nothing else to fight against. Now, here's the reason why people start fighting is because from the angle that I'm coming at, I'm not coming from the angle as it relates to dealing with how other people deal with a holiday. I come from the angle of dealing with how them that have truth deal with them that don't have truth. And you see, the, uh, the, the Messiah says, he said, them that are whole, they don't need no physician, but them that are sick need a physician. I only came for the lost sheep 
of the house of Israel. That meant that the lost sheep of the house of Israel would be those that resided in darkness, those that still didn't know truth, those that had not yet come in contact with the Father's righteousness according to his word. But you would never reach them in that manner. So my whole thing is, it's not about dealing with the people when you come in contact with the information and you learn new things. I remember it was in 1992. What year is this? It's 2019. So how many years is that if you add them all up? 1992 and this is 2019. If you, need, years. if you need a pencil, you can add that up. Okay, about 18 years. I'm going to show you something. Here, you can take that up there. I keep talking. Oh, I mean, I better do it. Keep me on, on point with that. Okay, now I'm back. Years. Somebody said 27. 27 years, damn. I'm now, been 27 years. Okay, 27. <laughs> 27 1992, years. 2002, yeah. and then you got you got 2019. Okay, whatever, however amount of years it was. Let's do it like this. Okay, now look. When you look at all of them years, what happened in 1992 is that before I went to church, went back to church, my ex-wife knew that I was a studier of the scripture because I was brought up in church. Can somebody reach uh, Brother Monte Scott and tell him I'm making a video? Okay, so she came to me one day she wanted me to get back in church because I had brought her to church, you know? But I'm ripping and running the street, so I wasn't ready to be completely committed to church, you know what I mean? So, so she's strategically trying to get me back in church, right? So she came to me one day and she said, well, she said, well, can you come to church for the Easter program and do a little short speech? And I said, well, I said, yeah, I can do that, because, you know, Easter time, a lot of people come to church and stuff like that. And back then, we wasn't nowhere near no truth. So I say, yeah, yeah, okay, I will. I say, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll come and do it. So I had, my auntie had this Bible in the house. It was called a Dakes Annotated Reference Bible. This Bible had everything in it. So when I went to looking at Easter and then started seeing things like Ishtar on the side of the commentary and the, the queen of heaven and uh, the god of fertility and all of these things. And then I found out that Easter was not even a day. It was just a word that had been put. It was the only place that you ever seen the word Easter in the Bible is when they was dealing with the Passover. But this is where my studying had led me to. And my, my senses was heightened. I was like, wow. I felt good about that, what I learned. I ain't never celebrated Easter since then in 1992. But for her to ask me to come to church, I had to analyze some things. Here's one thing that I had to analyze. The first thing I had to analyze is that, were they going to be able to receive this? Even though it was truth of scripture, and even though I could show it to them in the Bible, why are they gonna be able to receive it? The second thing I was gonna have to uh, analyze is whether they was gonna be able to receive me handling the Bible, where my life didn't even exemplify the truth 
that I was knowing. You see, you can have the truth all day long, but if your life itself ain't exemplifying, then the truth that you do know, it's going to fall on deaf ears. And many of you brothers, you'll come out and you'll start talking about a 4th of July or Easter or something like that. And you know what? Your life don't exemplify nothing you're talking about. You still ain't taking care of your kids. You're still fornicating. You're still smoking dope. You're still getting drunk on the weekend. You're still doing all types of stuff. You're still cussing people out. You ain't learned how to have no control of your spirit whatsoever but you'll come out on the, on one of these days and you'll start dealing with other people and see that becomes a manifestation that you're not where you're supposed to be because if you was where you're supposed to be you would thank the most high when he blessed you to be able to see those falsehoods and then you no longer bound by them and you thank the most high for that you thank the most high for what he have done in your life and you start living by those things and become an example you don't run and run over there and start trying to deliver nothing to your brother. Get this scripture right here. Um, yeah, yeah. So you brothers out there, y'all try to twist the post and the message. Y'all know what the message was really saying. It wasn't a justification of serving and worshiping heathenistic things. It wasn't a justification for that. What it was, it was a it was a dealing with the hypocritical mindset that many of you brothers have. As soon as you learn something, now you think that you got something over your brother that you can go and deal with him about. So that's what it's about. And that's why many of the brothers get mad because you want to allow your education to try to assume some type of preeminence over your brother or you know something that he don't know. See, you ain't got the sense enough to just have a humble spirit and just live by those things in your life. Somebody even asked me, oh, you about to go be a part of the barbecue? You better know it. You better know it. I got a truck. I got a truck right now. It's packed with all kind of music equipment because I'm the DJ. See, I'm at work. I'm at work, still working. Gonna get paid to go set up music and play music while other people that don't know what this day is all about celebrate. You see, but as for me, I know what the day is about. I am working. How many of you other brothers are off today? Are any of y'all at work? You see, you see the hypocrisy in it? Oh, you'll take the day off and you'll lay around and you'll rest and you'll do all of that, but that comes with the day too. So if you take the day off and you're not working, you ain't found you some work to make up the six days of work that you're supposed to be doing, then you right in there celebrating with the rest of them, contrary to what your mouth might say. Oh, let's, let's go to the scripture. Let's go to the scripture. Let's go to the scripture. Matthew chapter 9, verse 13. And where them brothers at is I told them that because y'all trying to overlook, because many of our brothers are smart, they are smart and they're well educated in the word and they know exactly when somebody is trying to say something. But sometimes people say, ooh, ooh, we got the so-called elder now. He just stuck his foot in his mouth. We got him now. So I'm telling them brothers, you come right on over here and you defend what I'm saying. I'm not saying that the 4th of July was not a paganistic holiday. What I am saying is when the 4th of July came into existence in 1776, and in 1776, the slaves was in the field. So how in the world could they be celebrating any Independence Day when they were still picking cotton and still building houses and all of that stuff? You see? They never celebrated the heathenistic holidays, but they would take advantage of the day off as they would give them a day off and a case of alcohol to make sure that they didn't run off. And what would they would do? They'd do the same thing that the Negroes, the Hebrews do every weekend when Friday come. They just shift it around. Oh, if we going into the Sabbath now. We're going into the Sabbath now. But the Sabbath ain't been about rest to none of you because you're still on Facebook talking to each other every day. You're still watching TV throughout the week. You're still having a glass of wine. You're still doing all that. When the Sabbath specifically says that you should give up everything, that means that you don't do nothing but rest. You don't turn no TV on. You ain't running around fellowshipping with nobody. You ain't doing all that stuff on the Sabbath. You don't even speak your own words. Everything that come out of your mouth gotta be the word of the Most High. You see? So I'm telling you, so when I start dealing with these things, it's not from a standpoint of defending the thing as much as it is a standpoint trying to get our brothers to understand. Listen, what do we say? Well, Matthew 9, 13. Mm -hmm. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. But, uh, go ye and learn what that means. 
back, go, go to Matthew, just pull up Matthew 9 chapter on your phone and read uh, a couple of verses before so we can get the full context of what he's saying. Start at about the 10th verse. And it came to pass, as Jesus sat at meat in the house, behold, many publicans and sinners came. Many and publicans, sat down. many publicans and sinners came and sat down. Many of those people came and sat down with the Messiah. Go ahead. With him and the disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master? with publicans and sinners. Uh -huh. But when Jesus heard that, he said unto, unto them, they that be whole need not a physician. He said, why is your master participating in things with these people? And the Messiah said, them that are whole do not need a physician. Go ahead. But they that are sick. But they that are sick. Keep going. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. But now here to my brothers, you go and learn what that means. You go and learn what that means. Keep reading. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. See, see, because he desires mercy and not sacrifice. And though we come to understand the root of these, the root of these days, these festive days that the heathens celebrate. We come to understand the root of them because we have access to information. But there are many of our brothers that have not yet come into access to the information. So henceforth, the Messiah said, you gonna learn what that means because I desire for you to have mercy on them that are ignorant rather than the sacrifice that you are given. What good is it for you to give up the sacrifice on a day that you have come to understand is heathenistic if the only thing you're going to benefit from it is to come back and slug your brother over the head with a rock because of his ignorance. See, that don't make sense. That don't make sense at all. Okay? So, we establish that. That's one scripture. Go to Matthew chapter 23 and find the verse where it says, you strain at a gnat. Now, see, because somebody wants to throw some scriptures out there that are completely out of context, we're going to give you some scriptures straight from the Messiah's mouth, how he dealt with people, how he dealt with his brothers that were in a lost condition. He had all the knowledge and all the glory of heaven, yet he became a man humble as one of his brothers in order to be able to relate and identify them. He didn't reach them with no heavenly things. That's why he had to speak to them in parables. So make no mistake about this, brothers and sisters. You're not going to twist my words and make it look like I'm justifying anything that's heathenistic. No, but what you can say is you can lay claim to, man, you know what? This dude, he won't let us get up there and be, be, be big shots before nobody. Every time we get the opportunity to be a big shot, here he come, kicking the carpet out from my funders. Well, you're right. That's exactly what it is. Because that's what the Messiah said, do. Go ahead and read what it say. Want me to read where it say that what you said? Yep, yep. Uh, Matthew 23. Matthew chapter 23. And 24. Ye blind guides. You are blind guides? We strain at a net. You strain at a net. And this is a day that the most high have made. I don't care what anybody attached to it. You can't attach nothing to the day. No man can add one second to this day. No man can take one second away. I wouldn't care if you called the day uh boo foom, get out, uh whatever, whatever name you want to put on the day. You cannot add anything to this day that the most high have not already done. This is a day that the most high have made. And swallow a camel. He said, you'll strain at a net. Then you'll turn around and swallow a camel. That's these brothers that we're talking about. They can't wait till something like this roll around so they can go and beat somebody over the head. Okay, but let me tell you something. It's going to be some brother that's celebrating 4th of July out of his ignorance today. Because he don't know, first of all, he don't know that he's Israel. You see? And until he know that he's Israel... Everything you do to him, you're going to be wrong for it, okay? There's some brother that's celebrating the 4th of July today, but his house is in order. His kids are taken care of. 
He's married to his one wife. He ain't cheating on her. He got a good job. He go to work every day. He honor the most high in all of the ways of righteousness that he can. But you got some, you got some one of our Hebrew brothers. He don't honor no fault because of the truth that he know. But his house is out of order. He's still fornicating. He's still doing everything that he was doing before he even came to know that this was pagan or heathenistic. He's still in worse shape than the average person. And he ain't trying to work on his own life because he's too busy looking at what other people are doing. He said, you're a blind guy. You're straying at a net and then you'll turn around and swallow the camel. Why do we know who the Bible is talking to? We know who the Bible is talking to by by, by the way that you brothers respond sometimes, you make it manifest that you are the one that the scripture is talking about. You'll strain at a net and then you'll swallow a camel. You'll strain at a net. You'll talk about somebody for celebrating the 4th of July, but you're going to punch your wife in the mouth and then try to use the scripture to justify you. You go home and do some dumb stuff. You know what I'm saying? Just cuss your, just cuss your mother and father. You strain at a net. You worried about the 4th of July, but you ain't spoke to your mama, been by your mama's house in who knows how long, all because she's still celebrating Christmas. You see, see many of you dudes is in this condition, and you think that you can hide behind the information, but the information is available to anybody that can go get it. If it wasn't for Google, many of you dudes wouldn't know nothing. You wouldn't know absolutely nothing. And that's why when you get into dialogue or a conversation, you can't come back with sound scriptures because you got to Google everything. So you go and try to Google something that you heard and then you come back with the scripture and it's completely out of context. But somebody that been walking by the scripture, they know what they talking about. You know why? Because I was the super brute of super brutes. I was the Paul of this modern day era when I got the truth. I don't know if it was many people out there was swiping a sword and smashing people to the ground. But you know what? When the Most High smacked me down on Damascus Road, you understand what I'm saying? And beat me to a pulp. Beat me to a pulp and tell me, hey, you know what? You don't deal with my people like that. Them is my people. I don't give you that information so you can go back and deal with my people. You must exercise the same mercy on my people that I've exercised towards you. And you can't do that? Mm -mm. Now, nah, that's why I'm like I am. It really is an expression of love because I don't want to see some of you dudes go through the same thing that I went through. You see? The most high about broke my legs for the way that I was treating these people because of the information that I was learning. And I was excited about learning. I was just using it the wrong way. I wasn't using it to better my life. I was using it so I can keep coming back arguing with people or saying something crazy. You see? And I know what I'm talking about because where my brother's at. I told him just hit the video. I want y'all to come on here and defend. But see, most of them know what I was saying from the beginning. They know what I was saying from the get-go. They know that I was never defending that from the get-go. They know what I was talking about, the self-righteous, hypocritical mindset of some of our brothers as they come in the truth. That's why ain't none of them came and hit the video. Hit the button. Don't run now. I told you to save all of your comments till the video came on. <laughs> Next scripture, uh, keep staying at Matthew. Go to where you pay a tithe of Anais mint and coming. That's probably around, yeah. Go to that. So we're talking about how the Messiah dealt with his people. All of these falsehoods existed long before we ever came in contact with the truth. They're gonna to continue to exist. You see, and if, if nine out of 10 times, it's the most high to start enlightening the eyes of our understanding. When we develop a genuine desire to seek and search after his word, then he starts enlightening us. That's something that we do. We have to have a desire to seek after his word and then he enlightens us. And then we should be blessed by that. So if that's the only way that his truth is gonna be revealed to us, what makes us think that because when the Most High revealed truth to you from having a hunger and a thirst after his righteousness, now all of a sudden, he's just gonna allow your brother that ain't go, got no desire to chase after to see it. Nah. Uh, you got it? Yeah. Okay, read it. Matthew 23 and 23. Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Hypocrites. Hypocrites. For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cummins 
and coming and have omitted the whiter the whiter weightier the weightier matters of the law now that's what he's saying he said you're a hypocrite you'll pay a tithe mint and ice and coming but then you omit the weightier matters of the law you see now Sometimes we can do certain things like keep the Sabbath, uh, keep a feast day here, keep a law over here. But he called you a hypocrite because the things that you're doing, you're omitting the weightier matters. You see, because the most important matters of the law are what? Read it. It's there. Judgment. Judgment. Mercy. Mercy. And faith. And faith. Now, here's the key. The way your matters of the law is judgment. Now, why do we say, judge not, lest ye be judged? And what judgment you meet, it shall be measured unto you again. So he tell you, don't judge, because all of us have fallen short. All of us have a sinful nature, and all of us have been guilty of sin. So he's saying, if you've been guilty of sin, it's best for you not to try to judge nobody. He said, because if you do judge somebody, whatever measure that you hold against them, that's the measure that I'm going to hold against you when it's time for you to be judged because you're all sinners. He said, these are weighty matters of the law. If you understood this, you wouldn't be trying to judge anybody about anything because you're going to be judged with that same type of, 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 of harshness that you're using. Then he said, mercy. We just read in Matthew 9, 13. He said, I desire mercy rather than your sacrifice. I'd rather you stay ignorant. I'd rather you didn't know nothing about it and that you be celebrating the 4th of July as long as you loving your brothers. He said, because when you come into truth, you'll make the sacrifice because you understand that that is not a, 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 a holy day. You'll make the sacrifice. But if the sacrifice that you make him cause you to misuse your brother, he said, you get out of here. You go learn what that means. I'll take mercy. You have mercy on your brother any day. Then I will take you offering me something without mercy towards your brother. And then he said, faith. These are weightier matters because what you should be doing is you should be exercising the same faith that the Most High had uh, done in your life. You could be exercising the same faith and believe in the Most High for, for your brother. He said, them are weightier matters. Now, if you was exercising for your brother who was celebrating 4th of July today, you was exercising faith, then you would understand that the Most High was going to bring him out. That would stop you from dealing with him any kind of way. You would know that. Then you're talking about what the Messiah is talking about when we're talking about dealing with each other. Because that's the grand sum total of his whole will. It don't matter how much stuff you know, how many verses of scripture you can quote, how much you learn. If it ain't toward loving your brother and raising him up, you might as well not know anything. Now, Galatians 4 chapter. I remember one of the brothers tried to use Galatians. You can't use Galatians. Get out of here with that. You can't come back and use that. Where they at? Come and get the button so that we can make manifest between all our brothers and sisters on Facebook and in social media who not to listen to. Where you want me? Start, start at the first verse. Galatians 4th chapter, first verse. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differ nothing from a servant. Though he be Lord of all. Now, he said, listen. He said, now I say that the, that the heir, as long as he is a child, he differs in no type of way from a servant. Even though he's Lord over everything. You see that brother that's, that's, that's celebrating today? You got to understand that he is an appointed heir in the kingdom. And the only reason why he is doing the things that he is doing is because he is a child in his understanding. He said, but don't get it twisted. Just because he is a child and just because he looked like somebody that's separated from the Most High, you must understand that he is an heir. And he is Lord over everything. It just have not been committed to him because of the fact that he is a child. Go ahead, keep reading. But is uh, under tutors and governors 
until the time appointed of the Father. Now, let me ask you a question. How many of you brothers, how many of you brothers quote, quoting and spitting this word out here, how many of you have never been children? Tell me that when you was a child, you could handle the word of the Most High. Tell me, tell me that when you was a child, that you looked like you was something different than somebody that never knew the Most High. Tell me that. Tell me that you skipped childhood. See, because you got to understand is that the brothers that you're dealing with today that are children, they will be ruling over you tomorrow as heirs. He said, I say, therefore, that the servant, as long as he is a child, he looks no different than a slave or somebody that's separated from the word of the Most High, even though he's Lord over everything. But he is under tutors and governors until the appointed time of the Father. You see, the spirit is in the earth. The spirit is the tutor and the governor. It is the spirit that said, how be it when the spirit comes, he shall convict the world in righteousness and of sin and of judgment. That's the spirit's job. You see, he's up under tutors and governors until the appointed time of the Father. And here's where your draws get snatched off. Keep reading. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. You see, he said, even so we were when we was children. So one of you brothers that's talking that nonsense. You gonna tell me that you bypassed, that you skipped right past being childhood? That you tell me that you ain't never popped a firecracker? Come on over here and tell me. Where the brothers at? Somebody tell me. Tell me you ain't never popped a firecracker. Tell me you ain't never I ate the barbecue that came off the grill. Celebrate it. Tell me all that. Tell me you ain't never been to the festivity. Tell me you ain't never been to the festivity and watch the fireworks display. Come on. He said, because even we so we were the same way when we were held up under the same bondage. That's why the Messiah said, I desire mercy rather than sacrifice. I understand that you come in the truth, but I need you to take the truth and I need you to exercise that same mercy for your brothers that I've shown you. What else we got? But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. Look, 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 look. The point was made off of that. Oh, okay. You see? Okay. You see, the point was made because we have all been there. You can't just see many of us are still in the process of growing, of growing up. You understand? We're in the process of growing up. And as we grow, we become excited about the things that we're learning. And uh and all of that. Yeah. Hey man, who got my spot held all up? What it do? <laughs> yeah, so so we in the process. We in the process of growing. We're in the process of growing. As we start growing in our knowledge and in our understanding, we have to understand that our brothers are not growing at the same time, at the same rate. Our brothers are only going to grow as they seek the most highest will. When the scripture says, blessed uh, are them that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. In essence, what he's saying, he is literally saying that those brothers and sisters, in order for them to understand, they gonna have to have a hunger for the Most High's righteousness themselves. Hey, tell them I need this white car to move up some. Yeah, so, so, you know, we get, and that's the thing that make the difference. We try to give a word to our brothers and sisters that have not yet developed a hunger and a thirst after the Most High's righteousness. And then when they reject it, you know, we talk crazy. It's their fault. Oh, they heed this. Oh, they, now we want to throw all kind of scriptures. But in actuality, it's really our fault. Yeah, in actuality, it's really our fault because we ain't using the scripture the right way. All the scriptures and things that we learn, we got to put them in our own life first. We got to put them in our own life first. And just like I'm saying to my brothers, now y'all right about what y'all saying. I found out about these, these heathenistic things. The first one I, 
The first one I found out about was was uh, Easter. That was the first one. And then the second one was Christmas. Get off the curb, man. Get this motherfucker off the curb. Yeah. Am I right in that spot? Yeah. Yeah, the first one, the first one was Easter, and what Easter did is that Easter opened up a door, because I started saying, man, if Easter's false, let me see what else. So the first thing I did is I went to Christmas. I, I went to start looking at, at the Christmas, but I couldn't find the Christmas in the Bible, so it made me start looking outside of the Bible for Christmas, and then I started coming in contact with Saturnalia and you know, where the original Santa Claus came from. Did you not know that Coca the Coca-Cola uh, the, uh, company invented the Santa Claus that you know of today? That, that Coca-Cola invented him. You see, the, the white, the white man, the white suit, the red. Hey, that was Coca-Cola colors. That was Coca-Cola, the soda cup, the soda pop company invented him back in the way early 50s. You understand what I'm saying? So I was starting looking at all of these different things and learning all of these different things. And so then you go and you say, well, damn, if Easter ain't man, if Thanksgiving ain't man, but what about? What about Thanksgiving? So then you go look at Thanksgiving. You find out. You find out that Thanksgiving is a result of uh, of uh, them being commended for slaughtering a bunch of Indians. And so every year they were commended and commemorated this day by slaughtering, slaughtering the Indians and they're having a feast. You didn't know these things. Black people did not know these things. And, and they would have never knew these things if it was not for the zealous young men that's going in the Google and all these books and they finding out this information and then they're just coming back in the midst of their family celebrating. Their family ain't celebrating for the same reasons. They're not celebrating 4th of July because of independence because the slave was not free in 1776. They were celebrating for a completely different reason. They wasn't celebrating Christmas because they didn't know nothing about Saturnalia and all of those things. They didn't celebrate for those things. They only We only knew about these things as brothers start coming with more information to release the truth. You understand? But when you get ready to release that truth, it's better to let a soul that's seeking, that's seeking knowledge, you release the truth to somebody that's seeking knowledge. To people that are not seeking anything, you're only going to do come in and, and become an interruption and a major stumbling block in their life. And when you get rejected, you'll blame everybody else. But really, it's you. That you ain't learned how to use the truth that you know. And maybe the Most High didn't give it to you to know. Which scripture? Ezekiel 34 chapter. Start reading at the ninth verse. To those brothers that think that they can use scriptures to combat what I'm saying, you can't use it because the scriptures are being aimed directly at you as it relates to your personal accountability, not only to the Most High's obedience to what it is that you know, but also to how you're going to use it to your brothers. Ezekiel 34. Ezekiel 34. Nine. Therefore, O ye shepherds. Hear the word of the Lord. Now, everybody want to be a shepherd now because brothers say, oh, this is my responsibility. I got to tell the truth. I got to teach. I got to teach. Well, this scripture is for you too. Thus said the Lord God, behold, I am against the shepherds and I will, I will require my flock at their hands. He said, I'm against all of you men that's trying to teach everybody. He said, I'm against all of you because you're not using what I gave you in a way that's conducive to building my people up and edifying my people. He said, therefore, I am against you and I'm going to do what? Require my flock at their hand. He said, I will require my flock at their hand. Go ahead. And will cause them to cease from feeding the and flock. And I will cause them to cease from feeding my people. The most I don't need you to feed nobody. He don't Neither. need you to go and tell nobody nothing. Neither, neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore. Come on. For I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they might not Back be, up, back up. He said what? I will deliver my flock from their mouth. He said, I will deliver my flock. Go ahead. That they may not be meat for them. For thus saith the Lord God, behold, I even, I will both 
search my I sheep. I will search my sheep. And seek them out. And I will seek them out. As a shepherd seeketh out the, his flock in the day that he is among his his sheep that are scattered. See, now that's that's good. Okay. See, because basically what he says is that, look, I don't need you to tell nobody nothing. You should be content with the fact that I sent my spirit and he enlightened you. And now you should just be content and just love on me and, and put those things and live by those things that you know. And you have faith and mercy and judgment towards your brother and know that what I did for you, I am going to do for him. What I did for you today, I am going to do for him tomorrow. But see, when brothers don't want to look at things like that, because it almost means like, oh, well, you ain't got nothing to do. No, you got something to do. You go find out how to live your life and how to get your life back. Out. That's how you do that. Yep. John 8, chapter 8, verse 7. Alright. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin amongst among you, let him first cast a stone at her. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Because this is what our brothers want to do. This is what our brothers want to do. I tell you, they want to flip through the Bible. They want to flip through the Bible. They want to flip through the Bible. Then when you get certain places, you want to start ripping pages out. You want to start ripping pages out the Bible. Oh, they rip, 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 rip that. Read it again, Jason. What it say? So when they continued asking him, he lifted himself up. Lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Because many of your brothers was the same brothers that was in this crowd. They all came and they all was oh, they're celebrating. They're doing, it. they're doing that. They're doing that. And you know what? And they come to the Messiah and the Messiah said, okay, when he raised up, he said, I tell you what, all of y'all can throw rocks. All of y'all can throw rocks. But you better not have no sin in your life when you do. So, it's the same thing that we say in the day. He who is without sin, throw the first rock. Jeremiah 10 and 1. Jeremiah 10 and 1. Here's another familiar passage of scripture that the brothers like to pull out on, on other brothers when they come down to holidays and stuff like that. You see, here's what it is. The, the woe is only, only on those that know. Woe to him that know to do good, but do it not. There ain't no woe on the man that don't know nothing. Jeremiah 10, verse 1. Jeremiah 10, chapter, chapter 10, verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord spaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Hear ye the word which the Lord spoke against you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. Learn not the way of the heathen and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven for the heathen are dismayed at them for the heathens are dismayed at them for the customs of the people are vain for the customs of the people are vain for one cutteth a tree out of the forest one cut down a tree and work it and work it of the hands of the workmen with the axe uh-huh they deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it not that it move not. They are upright that they are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. Uh huh. They must need to be born. They must. So what we look at that? He said, "Learn not to wear the heathen, right? Learn not to wear the heathen. Showed you what the heathen do. Showed you what the heathen do. But let me ask you something. You already learned to wear the heathen." Oh, you don't celebrate Christmas now, but you did. You already got learned the way to eat, and not just Christmas, but there's a thousand other customs that you learned that you ain't even came to identify with yet because you're still in the absence of that type of truth. And the same way that you're talking about Christmas or 4th of July or a holiday, I can pull something out in this book that you ain't even ex been exposed to is the custom of a heathen. That you're still living like and you're still in sin even though you don't know it and you become as a hypocrite that will strain at a gnat and swallow a camel because the sin that you're doing that you don't know is the custom of the heathen is far worse than the gnat of 4th of July that you're straining at. See, you already learned the way of the heathen. 
You already learned the way of the heathen. You learned the way of the heathen. You already to celebrate Christmas, New Year's, Thanksgiving, Fourth of July, Easter. You already to learn the way of the heathen. You got Nikes. You got Air Jordans in your closet. You got polos. You got Tommy Hill figures. You got Jordan's jeans, Calvin Klein's. You got Cecil's. You got all these things. You got a whole rack of cologne. You got a whole rack of cologne in Victus and and, uh, and and Lagerfeld and, and and all of these. You got all. You already learned the way of the heathen, and you're still sopping up the way of the heathen on a daily basis. Only you're so busy looking at your brother that you can't see the condition of your own life. You this too? No. Oh yeah. Can't see the condition of your own life. Matthew seven chapter. You see? Can't see the condition of your own life. When you get delivered from something, mm -hmm. you are so grand and you are so grateful that all you can do is just thank the most high. And then you exercise judgment by not passing that judgment that you was once guilty of on your brothers. Then you exercise mercy to know that your brother might be lost today. But because you exercise in faith, the weightier matters of the law. Your mercy, because you exercise in faith, you have mercy on your brother. And your faith makes you understand that the Most High will do for my brother tomorrow what he done for me today. That enables you to be in the midst of your people, to fellowship with your people, even in the midst of their ignorance, because you're operating by these principles. These principles, the weightier matters of the law are judgment, mercy, and faith. And when you put those three together, Hey, man. Hey, well, you know what? Somebody still got them hanging up in their closet. And, and you know, when we was talking about it yesterday, how when we was young back in the 80s, Sassoon was the hottest thing that came out with all these colored shirts and everything. But so it's still in our mind. It ain't even physically got to be in your life as much as it is in your mind that you can see the ignorance that you was once in and see that you was in the same ignorance that your brother was in. And if the Most High brought you out, he'll bring your brother out if you'll exercise the same faith. What you got? Seventh chapter, Matthew. Because they ain't, they ain't throwing up none of these scriptures. Matthew chapter seven, verse one. Judge not that ye be not judged. Now you talking about being a commandment keeper. That is a commandment straight from the Messiah's mouth. What does it say? Judge not that ye be not judged. He said judge not that you be not judged. You know why? He said because it is appointed once for a man to die. And after this, there is judgment. Listen, yo, yo, Johanna, I'm not saying that you're not speaking truth. I'm saying that how you use the truth that you know when you're dealing with your brothers, it, it man, I'm telling you, you better be very careful. Because if you're using truth and you're not dealing with your brothers in the same manner that the Most High have dealt with you, then guess what? The Most High sent another servant like your brother to come and tap you on the shoulder. And many times, some of the time, when you get tapped on the shoulder, you get angry about it. I'm not at war with nobody, and I would never make an enemy of my brother. But if I see my brother out of bounds, I'll come and tap you on the shoulder. But it's not something that's di deliberately or aimed at you, period. Now, I made a statement on Facebook that maybe you misunderstood what was being said because it was not a defense about anybody celebrating anything as much as it was brothers that have come from darkness into light and then start using the light uh, to be non-beneficial to them that are still in dark. So let's get an understanding with what, with what it is that we're saying because these scriptures ain't going to change. The book says, judge not that you be not judged. And if the books say that, who can come and say anything different? Yeah, I know the conflicting letters of Paul will come and tell you, that. Do, do you know not that you shall judge angels? Well, angels in another dimension, I don't know. I know what the Messiah said, so the only question that I can ask is whose word is greater, the Messiah's word or Paul's word? And if the Messiah tell you, don't judge, because you're going to be judged, he said, don't you judge, because you're going to be judged yourself one day. Keep going. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. With what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. Eyes and fingers, y'all not listening. You try to make me say something that I'm not saying when you should be listening to what I am saying. I'm not saying that you don't warn people. 
You don't warn people about the pending judgment to come. But brothers is going way past warning people. Y'all tearing up families and falling out with your loved ones. No, what you should do is you should have mercy on people that can't comprehend your frame of mind. Said, judge not that you be not judged. And what, what judgment you may meet, it's going to be measured to you again. Now, which of you brothers can stand before the Most High without sin? What can you say about anybody warning you and you got sin in your life? I'm warning you now. How are you dealing with the warning that's going ahead to you as it relates to dealing with your brother? This is a warning right now. How are you going to receive this warning? Why are you talking about warning other people? How are you going to receive the warning that's coming at you right now? See, love is the key that unlocks the door. And there is nothing that should override brotherhood. Because even my brother is in the gutter today. I can believe him out of it. I can by faith. If my brother that's in the gutter gives my faith something to do. But I don't love my brother if I don't want to see him get better. And if the gospel be hidden, it's hidden to them that are lost. And they don't know what they, what's making them stumble. The scripture said that the man in darkness, he know not at what he stumbled. Because when you're in a pitch black room, you can't see what's causing you to trip. The light have to come off. But the person that's in the pitch black room have to stumble so much to where they now start looking for the light. So once they start feeling around in that dark room, they don't know the light ain't just going to jump on and turn itself on. They have to be desiring to have some light in their life. Once they get through fiddling around and they mess around and get the light switch then the light switch come on and the first thing they do is they say wow why i was in the dark look at all this stuff i messed up look at that lamp that's broke over there look at that ashtray on the floor look at that shelf i knocked over and then they go back and they pick the table up and they set the chair back up that's cleaning up their life they set the lamp back up there but the lamp is broken see some damage you can make happen in your life it will be totally irreconcilable you won't be able to fix it some things will be broken some people that you're going to come across with the truth, you're going to do so bad that even when you come and see what's happening, you won't be able to reconcile. You won't be able to repair that damage. You see, them that are in darkness, they know it not what they know not what's making them stumble, but they have to desire the light. When you know truth, the Most High will give you your opportunity, Isa. You don't have to go out and search for it and you don't seek for it because the scripture says in the fifth chapter, uh, what's that fifth chapter? Go to the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed to them that do hunger and thirst. Uh, in this, in what? Fifth chapter of Matthew. You see, the Most High ain't giving his word up to anybody. You can go and try to put his word in the place that people ain't ready to receive it yet and then you'll blame the people as though they ain't heeding the warning. But it's not that. It's that you're putting the word in the wrong place. We only put the word in places where people are seeking the word. You got to be looking for something. You got to be looking for the light. You got to get tired of making a mess in your... I sit back and I watch you and I pray for you. Make a mess in your, in your whole life. I ain't going to bother you right then. Because if I bother you right then, you ain't ready to change. We ain't going to end up... You're going to run away from it. But I just let you. I just let you make a mess. And when you get good and ready to start seeking for the light, you turn the light switch on. And bam! That's how the Most High done all of our life. It ain't no secret. It ain't no mystery. We started looking for the Most High. And the, and the lights start coming on. Yeah, you want me to look for? I want you to look for blessed are them that do hunger and thirst. After righteousness. Should be around the 56th verse somewhere in there. Chapter 5. Okay, blessed are, blessed are the mercy. No, keep going. Blessed are the peacemakers. Okay, let's do this. Let's We're going to read the Messiah. Blessed we're going to read the Messiah on the servant of the mouth. Let's start from one. Okay, all you law keepers, let's keep some law. Because these are commandments. Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, he went up unto, into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs 
is the kingdom of heaven. See, and it don't make no difference whether we poor financially or we whether we poor from an impoverished mental state because we were all poor. As slaves, we was poor. We were separated from our language, our history, our heritage. We knew nothing, but the Most High held us. He held us and preserved us by his spirit. So many of our brothers are still impoverished in their understanding because they have been miseducated in this world. But he said they are blessed still in spirit because a mother cannot forget her suckling child, neither will the Most High forget them that are his children, even though they may be impoverished right now and may not understand what some of us understand. Blessed are the meek, for they no. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are they that mourn. They are the ones that should be comforted. See, when you really start expressing some love for your brothers, you'll get you'll start mourning. And the most I have mercy of it, you'll start weeping and you'll start mourning over your brother's sin, over his condition that he's in. You'll start weeping for him in your prayer. Oh Lord, please have mercy on him. Oh Lord, please raise him up. Oh Lord, please, I know you can do it. I know you can bring him in. Oh Lord, please, when you start weeping and mourning over your brother, you'll see the most high do some things that you ain't never seen him do. Come on. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. But you will never mourn over oh, oh, nobody when you got too much pride. And that's the problem that we having with the brothers in Israel, that your information has made you prideful. And there ain't no meek brothers no more. So if you ain't meek, you can't mourn. But when you got a meek and quiet spirit, when you are meek and you know that the Most High, had it not been for his goodness, you would have been swallowed up whole when you know that. These things you'll do. And I don't care what how many scriptures you try to use. You ain't going to use none of them that's in context. You say, let's read it. These things that you do, speak every man the truth, his neighbor. Execute judgment of truth, of peace. Okay, you right. But the reason why I tell you that you're using them out of context is because I just gave you a prophetic word in the book of Ezekiel, 34th chapter. Go and read it, verse 1 through 9. It was when the responsibility was put in man's hands to deal with the people. And they had the Levitical priesthood. But it's also a prophetic word that the Most High said because these wicked men didn't do what they were supposed to do as it related to speaking truth and judgment because the king was corrupt, the princes was corrupt, and they failed the people by not doing what the Most High told him to do. He declared that he was going to cause them to cease from feeding his flock and that he would feed his flock himself. So your lines of distinction are off. You are talking about doing things one way when the Most High have changed that. Hebrews first chapter, God who had sun-dry times in diverse matters in times past. He spoke to the fathers by the prophets. He used men to speak to other men and used men to do that in times past. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son who had been appointed heir over all things. So it's been taken out of your hand because the son appointed the spirit. He said, how be it when the spirit comes, he shall lead you, he shall guide you, he shall teach you. He shall convict the world of righteousness, for he shall only speak of, he, of what he heard of me. He shall not speak anything of himself. So, brother, I'm telling you, when you start trying to toss some scriptures, you best know what you're doing because you're going to get uncovered before all of your brothers and sisters on social media, and you're going to be made to be out of order. You cannot use these things that you're trying to use. This is what I'm talking about now. It's too many men trying to do the work of the Spirit when you should just be content with what the Spirit is doing in your life. Go on and live your life and let that light start burning as an example before your brothers. You see? I ain't got to come and say nothing. That's why I strategically move. I got to play the music, but you know what? I pull out a chain. Something as simple as that. I pull out a chain. I guarantee you before this day is over, four or five people gonna come and ask me, hey man, what that mean? I got my fringes on, always. I ain't gotta say nothing. Shoot, you see, you gotta be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove, but you'll only do that when you genuinely love your brothers and understand that they can't receive your words. Your words can be rejected, but your demonstration can't be denied. You see, they'll come and ask you, man, what is that? Some people make fun. Man, y'all part of a drill team or something? They'll make fun of it. They'll ask you, what is that? What is that? What, what's them things on your shirt? Why well, I see all your shirts got them things on. And see, th those are people that's seeking something. But we, we have a habit of wanting to take things to people that ain't looking for it. 
they're not looking for the most highest way. But we need somebody to, that we can show we know something. We know something. And we're doing a whole bunch of damage. What else we got? Listen to what the Messiah is saying. Let's put down what you think for a minute. Just listen to what the Messiah is saying. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. If ain't nobody coming to you, asking you, if ain't nobody ringing your phone, asking you, you shouldn't be volunteering no information. Oh, you just oh, you just got out of the Charles Concordance and Encyclopedia, and now you ready. I've been, I'm, I'm about to spit this on whoever, whoever come around. The Bible says, bless or them that hunger and thirst. If you ain't hungry, ain't no need in dealing with me. I can sit back and watch the world do everything. I've been living this long. I've been, I can watch the world do everything. But when somebody hungry, when somebody want to know something, and they come, oh, that's, thank you, Most High. You gave me an opportunity. Why, why is it so hard to just wait on the Most High to open up a door or give an opportunity? You see, then we don't want to identify with the fact that the Most High ain't using men like that no more. He's using men in a strategic manner. And he ain't using them like that. Part of the new covenant is that no man is going to teach another man. And that new covenant start coming into existence with the... Uh, start coming into an existence when the Messiah prayed that the Spirit will come into the earth. The Spirit is teaching men now. And men keep getting in the way. So, I still gave people the opportunity to come on here before your brothers and sisters and state your case. It's not a war. It's not a debate. You see, many of brothers are just younger than me. And I understand that sometimes I say things that you don't quite catch right then. But I tell you, like one of the brothers said, he said, you know what, I done learned. I done learned already. If it didn't sound like what I thought it should sound like, I done learned not to go messing with him because it's something else that's up under that rock that's going to jump out and bite you if you ain't ready for it. So what else we got? Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the merciful. That they shall obtain mercy. But well, they shall obtain mercy. You know why? Because the uh, Messiah already said he desired mercy rather than sacrifice. He desired mercy rather than sacrifice. If your brothers don't know what you know, he desired mercy. You don't need you jumping up there, sticking your chest out, telling everybody that this, that, the other. Like these jokers out here, don't get on the corner, start telling everybody what to do, telling everybody what to do. Got a bunch of kids with them out there on the corner. They ain't even learned how to live yet. They ain't even got their life in order yet. You mean tell me you ain't got your life in order yet? You ain't got your wife right yet? You ain't got your children right yet? You ain't got your brothers and sisters right yet? But you can come out on the corner and deal with a bunch of strangers and tell them what they ain't doing? You can strain at a net and swallow a camel. You know when you go home, you're whacking off, you're watching Pornhub, you, uh, you, know, you know what I'm saying, you're fornicating, you're all this other stuff, but you don't come out here like you Superman. You better learn how to be Clark Kent, brothers. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart. That means that you got to check your motive. And many of these dudes can't wait till a holiday comes. Oh, I got some work now. I got some work now. No, nah, how about you work the other 364 days out of the year that you living in sin by? How about you do that? That you living in sin by. See, the rabbit hole go much farther than that. You say, I ain't nothing. Else. I don't care how many feast days you think you're keeping or nothing else. When you start looking at the book of Jubilee, sixth chapter, it tell you that the children of Israel would go wrong at Moses' prophecy. He said they would go wrong. They would sin against me because they would refuse to make the year 365 days a year. If you living by 364 days, everything you doing is off. You still in sin. You mean tell me that you got to deal with nothing. Be trying to judge your brother about something. And you got a thousand sins that you don't even know that you tangled up in because you ain't been in the word long enough to know it. Right. And they be wonder why I'm excited like that. <laughs> I even excited because I I love it. I love it. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. It's beautiful. But it's simplistic. Read. Bless are the peace. My so question is, hold it. That's so the question is, where we get that? Where we get that? The question is, do we want to be known as right or righteous? <laughs> the question is, do we want to be known as right or righteous? 
yeah, we want to be known as right or righteous. But that comes from a, a, the, what the Bible says, let us walk circumspectly in the world. You see, your righteousness don't have nothing to do with your words. You see? Because when the Bible says, let your light so shine before men, and they'll give your Father glory in, your, in heaven. And say, let your word shine. So your righteousness is going to be born out of the word that you incorporate into your life and start living by. It's not going to be, it's not going to be born out of the words that you can speak. You see, there's too many people that want to be out here speaking, but it ain't enough of them doing no living. You see, and that's why I ain't running around trying to tell people. Because you know what? Irregardless to what people call me and what that look like, I know that as long as I got a roof over my head, that, head, that roof is covering my shame. When I go home, my sweetie pie, she got to see me in a way that's unlike anything that anybody else see. She might see me walk around the house drunk. Now, I didn't say that I get drunk, but she might see me walk around the house drunk. She might see me fire up a blunt in the house because I got hit with the ghost of my pet. Now, I didn't say that I smoke a blunt or a condoner. I'm telling you some of the different things that can go on up under your roof when you have shame. She might see me scheming through uh, Cinemax on a, 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 a dirty movie or something like that, but that's in my house. See, the things are in my house because I'm a sinful man by nature and I need the most highest mercy. And when I when I leave out of that house, I leave out of the house understanding what's up under the roof. And it's what's up under the roof that keep teaches me how to deal with my brother or my sister that live up under a roof too. And anytime I see one of my brothers and sisters with a self-righteous, hypocritical attitude, it gets up under my fingernails. So, what else we got? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Bless all the peacemakers. They should be called the children of God. Instead of trying to teach everybody, why not just be prepared to make peace between God and man? By making them understand the mercy that is born out of the sacrificial work of Hamashiach. Because we were all the most highest enemies. Had it not been for the sacrificial work, that is what made peace between us. But that thing that made peace between us was born out of mercy. It wasn't born out of judgment. The sacrificial work of the Messiah stopped us from being judged. Come on. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness. Say, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Go on, say, I'm saying, I'm <clears throat> go on and say, I condone uh, uh, worshiping uh, Satan this holidays. Go on, go on and say it. Go ahead, keep going. Bless are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you. Yep, go on. And go shall on. say all manners of evil against you falsely. Go on and tell them I said sake. it's all right to worship Christmas. Go on and tell them I said it's all right to keep Thanksgiving. Go on and tell them everything except what's being said. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For, for so persecute that that... They, the they prophets. the prophets which were before you. We're going to do one more. We're going to do Romans second chapter. We're going to do one more, and that's going to end it. So once again, I'm going to say what I'm not saying to my brothers. To my brothers, and I know sometimes it seems like I'm a little fussy, but believe you me, I love every last one of you. And, and I'm like that because I have a strong desire to get the point across that I'm making, that, that hopefully I know that if I'm making the point that that's on my heart to make, then the brothers are going to be blessed by it. They're going to be, uh, uh, it's going to be benefit. But sometimes the brothers going to get corrected, and then other times the brothers going to get rebuked. And then, then we got our brothers, like our brothers that don't know nothing, that just simply need to be edified through through uh, having a merciful spirit, you know. And so uh, I am not saying I'm in 100 percent agreement that that this Independence Day, as we know it in this system, is not it was not for us. You see, our forefathers were still in the slave fields. Their Independence Day is dealing with the independence that they received when they got out from up under Britain rule. OK, but we do have to understand is that there is a level 
of independence that our brothers and sisters lean toward uh, from slavery, that through the Emancipation Proclamation uh, and, and, and the Civil War, that when the slaves was free, you understand what I'm saying? That was something to celebrate. It was something to celebrate when the, the, they stopped cracking the whips and then our people didn't have to uh, work in the cotton field. It was some sort, some sense, something to be celebrated when we was no longer up under that type of extreme thing. But they didn't have their own day to celebrate, I'm sure. So they celebrate their independence around the same time. And I don't think it had anything to do with the heathens. And that's the problem that many of our brothers are getting confused. You keep making what your brothers and sisters doing as though they are doing it and partaking with the heathens and what the heathens done. Well, it may be like that in this day and time because of the miseducation and everything been so screwed up. That is why those brothers that understand truth, you have to understand truth, go on and live your life according to that truth and praise the most high but you have to take advantage of an opportunity because we got to reap the harvest of the lost sheep and through all of these false holidays that you come to understand are false many of your brothers and sisters don't and when they all still getting together and they coming from out of town that's a prime that's a prime prime time for you to reap a harvest, to go in there and snatch two or three souls out, and you'll be looking forward to the time that the holiday roll around, not so that you can celebrate it, but so that you can reap two or three of your family members out there, you got an opportunity to talk to somebody, let the truth fly, and even if you ain't letting no truth fly, you got the opportunity to love on your brothers and sisters that you ain't seen in a long time, and all that, so don't get getting hung up on that technical stuff, this is the day that the most high have made. We should rejoice and be glad in it every day. Now, I'm going to start. I'm going to start at the first verse. This is going to be the last one. <clears throat> Romans 2, verse 1. Therefore thou art unexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art the judges. For with, were, were in thou judges another, thou co condemnest thyself. He said you are without excuse. Whoever you are that judges another for wherein you judges another you condemn yourself because you're guilty of doing the same thing. If you ever celebrated 4th of July and you're condemning somebody that's doing it right now, you're condemning yourself because you've been guilty of the same thing. And even if you ain't never celebrated 4th of July, Christmas, or no other things, and you're judging your brother, you still condemning yourself. Because when he's talking about thou doest the same thing, it's talking about the sin. We have the same sinful nature. And a person that's in sin cannot judge sin. So when you judge sin, you judge and condemn your own self because you yourself are a sinner in need of the most high sacrificial work of the Messiah. Go ahead. For thou, for thou that judges do, doest the same thing, but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to the truth against them which committed such See, things. he's talking about the one that's running around judging people, but he got sin in his life too. He said, now you got to understand this, the righteous judgment of the Most High is against you, brother. It's not against the brother that you judging. It's not against the brother that don't know that 4th of July ain't his Independence Day. It's against you. Because you once didn't know 4th of July was your Independence Day. He said, but the Most High's righteous judgment is going to be against you, brother, if you're doing this. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. And thinkest that... Hold on. And thinkest thou this, O oh man, that judges them which doeth such things and doeth the same. And thou shalt escape the judgment of God? He said, do you think you're going to be out here judging people's sin and you yourself is in sin? He said, do you think you're going to escape the most high's judgment? <laughs> or despises. Is that right? He said, or despises. Or despises thou the riches of his look, goodness. Look, look, goodness. look, 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 it, look, look at him. E Ephesians 5 and 11. This is for you, 
this is for you, Yana, uh, Yohan and Malek. And then we're going to go to Ephesians before I get off since you came back on. Before all your brothers and sisters on Facebook, they've been watching all your comments. They've been seeing everything that you use. They hit a brick wall. And it's about to hit a brick wall again. But you ain't got to worry because I got a spatula that I'm going to use to scrape you up off of it. And we're going to put some real spiritual IVs in you so that you can understand what's really being said. Because if you use that scripture correctly, Nobody would be associating with you at all. Now, this is for you. I want you to listen. Go ahead. Or, or despise. Or is it that you just despise the riches of the Most High's and goodness forbearance, and forbearance and long suffering? And long -suffering not knowing that the goodness of God. Because you don't understand that His long suffering, His forbearance, and His goodness are the things that what. Lead it the tree, lead it thee to repentance. They are the things that lead a man to repentance. He says, so or is it that you just despise that the most high is so good that he won't judge your brother when he want to be judged? Or is it that you just despise that his goodness and his forbearance and his long supper? Or you a despiser that because you are ignorant of the fact that those are the things that he used to bring a man to repentance? You would never come to repentance if it was not for his goodness and his forbearance and his long supper and the spirit constantly showing you how raggedy and messed up you was. And eventually you got to the point where you understood how merciful and how good he was because he still accepted you. And one day you finally decided that you couldn't run no far. So you're going to go on and give it up. But you don't want to do that to your brother. Now let's go to Ephesians. Why he trying to use the book of Ephesians? Go to Ephesians 2. You see, you I, you're telling sometimes you young brothers, you need to just sit down and you need to listen. Because what, what, we, what we try to do is we really trying to edify you. But because you're mining in the right place, you think that somebody's fighting against you. And what happened is that when a young man won't heed instruction, then guess what? Time for the strap to come out. And then you get beat. And I remember when we was kids and we acted up, my daddy would come up to the school. And he didn't wait till you got home. He'll wait till the bell ring and everybody came out in, in, in from the classes. And then he'll whoop your butt right there. And, and all the kids will be the stop. And they laughing and everything. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And you over there hollering like a baby. See, when you won't deal with what you're supposed to do, and you won't do things like you're supposed to, that's what happened. And nobody wants to bring nobody to shame on social media. So sometimes it just do y'all good just to chill out. What you got? Where you want me to start? Start at? the first verse. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 and ye have he quickened and you have he quickened who were dead in trespassing who, who were dead trespassing, in trespasses and sins and sins where in the time past ye walked according to the course of this world where in the time past brother Johanny you walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power you walked according to the prince of the, of the power of the air that means you were up under Satan's influences and the spirit that knoweth worketh in the children of disobedience and the spirit that's working in the children of disobedience now was working in you among whom also, we all had our conversation. Among who the, among them people that the spirit of disobedience is working in, you also had your lifestyle in. Partying it and kicking it and fornicating and drinking and smoking dope and whatever else you was doing. And time passed in the lust of, of our flesh. And time passed in the lust of your flesh. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh. And of the mind. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And some of you might say, well, I didn't do all that. I didn't do all that. Well, even if you didn't do it, if you thought about it, you was guilty. He said you fulfilled the desires of the lust of the flesh and of the mind. So you're not going to walk around over here like you somebody grand that you can tell somebody something that you're, in, that you're not in sin. Or oh, what you tell us is that you become a despiser of the Most High's goodness and his long supper and his forbearance and his ability to have mercy on a man and compassion on a man, even in the midst of ignorance. The Most High is able to do that. You can stop right there. I ain't even got to go no farther. I mean, in the video. Now, for you, Johanna, you my brother till the day is over. And, uh... 
time to time. We'll have some classes like this. But I tell you now, I tell you now, it's a good thing because it's a pleasant thing when brothers can get together. Most cases it's better when we get together in the spirit of unity. But we don't always get together in unity because we got different perspectives and we see things different. Sometimes we see things different because it's an age, it's a generational gap, meaning that I may be older than you or you may be younger than me or you may be older than me and I may be younger than you. Sometimes we see difference of, of perspectives because we have all walked in the word for different lengths of time. But whatever the reason is that we have difference of perspective, the most high know about it. So when we do come together, you understand what I'm saying? Either either one of either we're going to be edified or then we're going to be angered. And if we are angered, then we know that, that, that we're not operating by the wrong spirit. You see? And so just like I'm saying, some of these things, there's plenty of people that can use scriptures, but you got to know what you're doing when you start pulling out these things that you're using. And they got to be in this proper context. Because I assure you that when Paul was dealing with this thing right here, he wasn't talking about how you try to use it. Uh, I have no fellowship with the workers of darkness. You see, we're not talking about that because celebrating some holiday ain't working no darkness. That's innocent. That's just innocent ignorance. They don't know. But when you're talking about having no fellowship of the workers of darkness, you're talking about people that you know. You probably got some friends. And you probably got some friends in your family. You probably got some family members that's, that's out here on the streets still sold, selling dope, still toting guns, shooting people, robbing people. And you know them. And you still slap hands and bump fists with them. And y'all cool. And come and say, yeah, that's my nigga. That's my nigga. That's what he talking about. And you still got fellowship with them. You might have a brother that you cool with. You know he fornicating. You know he fornicating. You know he against the Most High. The Most High said, have no fellowship with the workers of darkness. You see, because that fornicate, we shouldn't be certain things. You see? This is what you got to have everything in its proper context if you're going to use it. You see, it's in proper context. You're my young king. You're my young king. And my thing is like this. The book said when we get an understanding, your honor, when we get an understanding, it said if one could put a thousand devils to flight. Now, listen, it's quite natural that you, that you are younger than me. But I'm sure with what the most High giving you, you have been able to put a thousand devils to flight. He said, how much more? When you get a hold of your honey, and then you and your honey can come to an understanding, and his his what he did know now, boo, explodes, and two of y'all in agreement. He said, now two of you can put two ten thousand devils to fight just because you're in agreement. Imagine how many devils we're gonna put. And that's the prophetic word that's being spread amongst Israel as we start coming to these understanding of these principles and we start seeing things the same way. Two put 10,000 to flight. Four put, shoot, who knows how many thousand. That's how we're going to take over the world. So all praises, all honor, all glory. Anytime these brothers and sisters come together in ignorance, you just go and stand there in the midst of them and just let the light beat. Just let the light beacon. Let, just, let, just let the light just radiate off of you. I guarantee you somebody going to come. Somebody going to come and ask you a question. Somebody gonna come and ask you a question. I guarantee you. You know why? Because the Most High said, blessed are them that do hunger and thirst after his righteousness. And his, his eyes are in every place. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. Beholding the good and the evil. Therefore, there is going to be somebody that's going to see that light radi radi off, radiating off of you that's hungry. And they're going to gravitate toward that light. Man, he ain't over there drinking. He ain't over there messed all up, drunk and everything. Man, that, man, it's just something about that dude. Man, it's something about that dude. Hey, man, I'm going to go and holler. Hey, man, what's your, hey, I'm such a, and next thing you know, you understand what I'm saying? You got a brother walking with you, you know. You got a brother, but see, you don't want to get to be that type of brother where, when people see you come, oh shit, man, here come this, here come this dude with all this Hebrew Israelite stuff, man. This dude, man, he, man, he about to drive everybody crazy because they can't comprehend it. But that's how a lot of us are, you know what I'm saying? And, and people start running from us instead of to us. Look at this, man, a demoniac man that was in the tomb, laying around with dead folks, necrophilia, and all of that stuff, cutting himself with stones, trying to commit suicide, drawing his own blood. He said when he seen the Messiah get off the boat, he ran toward him. That's what people supposed to be doing. Because the man's wisdom make his face to shine. It's something radiating off of you that you can't even see, but they can see it from afar off. He said a man's wisdom make his face to shine. And that's what the scripture said. In him was life. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. And everything that was made was made by him. And and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the only begotten of the Father. In him was life. 
and the life that was in Hamashiach became the light that radiated off of men. Therefore, he said, let your light so shine before men and they'll glorify your Father which is in heaven. You just let that light, that, that light, that light, that's, that light that was in the Messiah and your obedience trying to live up to it. You just let that just start radiating off of you. You ain't got to try too hard. Thank the Most High and be of a joyful spirit and a joyful mind because of what he had blessed you to come to know. And let that thing, that joy and all that stuff will turn into light. And people will wonder, man, this dude, every time he come around, I just love it. I hate to see him go when it's time for him to leave. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. And I don't say this in no, in no, in no pride or arrogant way, but, but everywhere I go, it's like people's way. Like, Man, I wish you had a couple of more days to hang around. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I love that. I love that. That's how we had to be. We had to be to the point to where people don't even want to see us go. And when they having some, people make sure that your phone is among the first one to read. Man, make sure you tell such and such about it. Make sure you tell such. You'd be surprised. I'm invited everywhere. And I go everywhere. And I'm invited. I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere. You name it. You name it. I'm everywhere. I don't care where they invite me. I'm doing picnic, nightclub, what, whatever. If they invite me, I'm coming because most of the majority of the people, they know who I am. And I know who I am. So I can be in any place. You know what? I know what my assignment is. You know, and I just want our brothers to understand that, that sometimes we can be at war against the thing, like we say about Christianity. It's hard to be at war with Christianity without slapping the Christian. You see, Christianity and, and the Christian is two completely different things. You see, the Christianity is a religious construct that's been set up, and the Christian is a person that, uh, the Christian is the Negro that calls himself a Christian because of his ignorance. But sometimes you can be at war against Christianity, but it's hard to be at that. You got to be real strategic, and you got to know what you're doing to fight against a religious construct without slapping your brother. And this is how it is with these things right here. You got to... I don't know what it is, man. You, 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 see, you real about what you're saying about these days. But the thing is that you punching at the heathenistic part of it, but uh, it's your brother that gets uh, hit by it. The day still laying there, just big as bow. Oh, he ain't even touched you know, me. Gonna, yeah, but he sure keep knocking his brother you know, out, though. You know what I'm saying? So, so let us be mindful of that. All praises. We give our praise to the Most High Heavenly Father. Remember, this is the day that the Most High have made, and uh, nobody can add anything to it. I don't care what they put on it. Can't nobody add anything to it. You know, it's a day that He made. And new mercies, His mercy is new every day. That's what our Father David said. He said, every day, new mercy, I'll see. That's right. That's right. That's right. See, and we know that the construct itself, all of these things are born out of the construct itself. But many times it's our brothers that end up getting slapped. And we don't do the construct damage because it takes a special type of wisdom to be able to separate uh, the construct. And one of the hardest things it is for the brothers that call themselves Christians is how do they separate uh, the sacrificial work from from the word itself it's difficult it's difficult and, and you know and that's something that the spirit have to do so until he do it we just have to lay in there on behalf of our brothers and and uh, thank the most high for what he done for us and be praying yes, that he I will do the same thing for them praying he'll do the same thing for them so until then shalom we're gonna give you another report i'm telling you i know what i'm talking about it happens every year it happens every year and i've been doing this thing and right now it's raining so I don't know what's going to happen, but I don't believe it's going to rain all day because the most high mean for me to reap somebody out of here. Uh, somebody going to get reaped out of here. And y'all know that. Y'all know that Dao beloved, that King Moshe. Uh, y'all know all that. That brother Bron. All that. Y'all know that. Y'all know that Yehuda Shalom. Y'all know that music going forth. That music going forth going to hit like a ton of bricks. And we're playing that Hebrew music. And last year we were playing that Hebrew music. And I came yeah, I and some city it. officials called me the next day. But the only reason why I couldn't come is that I had to be in Jacksonville 
for that uh, James 1 and 1 last year. But the city officials called me and asked me if I would consider doing the music for a Stop the Violence thing. That was bad right there because they heard that key built music floor and it was good and the atmosphere was good. Everything was lovely and radiating. So I know what I'm talking about, brothers and sisters. Let's be a little bit more patient with our brothers and sisters that don't know. Let's just thank the Most High for what he's doing for us, you know what I mean? And let that mercy that he hasn't shown us start radiating off of us onto our brothers and all. Um, and all, and he gonna get all the glory, all the glory, all the glory. And that don't mean that we're compromised. It just means that we're being strategic. You see, we're being strategic in our approach and in our ministry. <clears throat> so, I'll praise to the Most High. Hallelujah.